Hi boys and girls. We are back thinking about our theme and nature and last time I met with you, you were talking about ponds and all the things that you can find in a pond. And if you looked more closely at a pond, it's not just tadpoles that live in a pond. With the last activity, you noticed that there were many animals and many plants that exist in a pond habitat. Today we're moving away from the pond and we're going to a new habitat that's a little bit closer to your home. It's your very own backyard. And we are going to look closely at what is going on in your backyard, what plants and what animals live there. I was inspired by this book called One Small Square Backyard. And today we're gonna to use this to help us focus our attention on that habitat that you have very close to you, right in your backyard. I'm not going to read you the whole story because it is quite long. If you get a chance to find this book, maybe at the library or online, you could investigate it more. But I do want to read you a few of the parts because it really activates your thinking at looking closer and thinking more about that habitat in your backyard. So listen closely. A backyard is one of the most amazing parts of nature. Who would have thought that nature is in your backyard? When we think of nature, we think of a forest or a pond or a lake, but nature is right there in your backyard, even though you live in the city. It is alive with creepers and crawlers, lifters and leapers. Now, what kind of animal or nature would be leaping? Hmm, maybe a grasshopper, movers, and mixers, munchers, and scrapers, singers. Oh, I know what the word singer makes me think of birds, right? Buzzers, hmm, bees. Chirpers, climbers, builders, buriers, and recyclers. In a backyard, hungry hunters search for clever hiders that will do just about anything not to become the next meal. Food makers capture energy that speeds to the earth from the sun across 93 million miles of space in only 500 seconds. Colorful petals double as landing strips for delicate butterflies and hardworking bees. And we've talked a lot about those hardworking bees. And that bug on stilts, Daddy Longlegs, he zips over leaves and twigs with the skill and speed of an acrobat. Go outside and catch a dandelion seed zigzagging to the ground. Pick up a rock that crumbles in your fingers. Look for tracks left in the mud by an oven bird. Hmm. Listen to a cricket rub its wings together. Watch a robin tug on an earthworm holding onto the earth for its dear life. Explore just one small square of a backyard, your own or someone else's, or maybe even the park down the road from your house. You will uncover a clue after clue about how nature works. You put all the clues together and you will be able to figure out how living things all over the earth are connected. This book is about discovering what's happening in your backyard. As you explore your square, the tools shown on this page will come in handy. With a magnifying glass, you will enter the world of the tiny. You will be able to look closely. You can actually get a magnifying glass at Dollarama if you don't have one. They don't have to be an expensive magnifying glass. You could also even get one of those magnifying containers where you can put things in it and the magnifying glass is the lid of the container. That's what we have in our classroom for when we go outside at school to do this activity. I also know that there was a set at Dollarama that has a bug net and some tweezers to pick up small pieces of nature. So you can take a look at Dollarama and see if you can find that nature kit in the toy section. With a collecting jar, you can look closely at an earthworm before returning it to the soil. Always remember, if you do touch nature, you have to leave nature the same way as you found it. So if you look at a bug in your bug catcher for a little while, make sure you put it back. The bugs 
and all of the things in nature all depend upon one another. If you take something away from nature, you could be hurting it. So you might want to have a little shovel and a flashlight, maybe a measuring stick and a jar, maybe a journal to keep track of what you're finding and a pan to put it in. And what you're going to do is you are going to have one small square. So what I want you to do is take a piece of paper and you are going to create a square like this. Fold your paper in half. Then once it's folded in half, you're going to take your scissors And once you've folded your square in half, you're going to cut the middle out of that square or rectangle. Remove the middle part and unfold. And now you have one small square. This is a rectangle. One small rectangle to put on the ground. And what I want you to do is look and see what you can find going on in that one small area. And then what I would like you to do is make a sketch of what you see and label it with scientific words and show me. You can upload your sketch when you're finished onto this activity. You will see that I've attached a couple of videos that I made when I was looking closely on my nature walk with Tucker the other day. I can't wait to see what you discover in one small square in your backyard. Have fun, explorers. See you later.